Gentleman talks recognized. Thank you. Chairman, as you know, the, the, the morning of Inauguration Day 2021, illegal immigration had slowed to a trickle and our borders were finally secure for the first time in decades. The border wall was nearing completion. The Remain in Mexico policy had all but stopped phony asylum claims and ICE was actually enforcing court-ordered deportations. By the afternoon of that same day, Joe Biden had reversed these successful policies and initiated an unprecedented illegal mass migration on a scale that no civilization in history has ever survived. Since that afternoon, this administration has deliberately admitted into the interior of our country 1.9 million illegal immigrants, 600,000 of whom have not even been given notices to appear in court. While the Border Patrol has been overwhelmed changing diapers and taking names, another 1.2 million known gotaways have entered our country as well. So that totals 3.1 million illegal immigrants who've been allowed into our country to violate our borders and, and demand billions of dollars of taxpayer resources that were supposed to be helping Americans. 3.1 million is a population larger than the entire state of Arkansas, a, a state that has seven congressional districts. And that's just in the last 25 months. The vast proportion of these people are homeless, impoverished, and desperate. Gallup warned us last year that there are 42 million people living in poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean alone who intend to come here now that they can, and they are. There's no question that this policy is deliberate and calculated. For two years, we couldn't get the Democrats to hold a single hearing on this crisis, not one. In the first six weeks of this session, Republicans have held it too. And we've come to the border today to ask the people who are at ground zero to tell us of their experiences. And not a single Democrat on this committee is bothered to show up to listen. If not already affected, every American soon will be because every community will soon face the practical effects of this collapsed border. We have to ask ourselves, how does it make our schools better to pack classrooms with non-English speaking students? How does it make our hospitals more accessible by flooding emergency rooms with, with illegals demanding care? How does it strengthen our social safety net by adding millions of impoverished individuals to a system that's already strained to the breaking point? How does it make our children safer with fentanyl flooding our neighborhoods and killing nearly 300 Americans a day? How does it make our communities safer to introduce violent cartels into them and make it all but impossible to deport criminal illegal aliens? How does it help working Americans to undercut them by flooding the labor market with cheap illegal labor? We are here today to listen to our fellow Americans who live with the full impact of this new and lawless age, one that's rapidly making its way to every town and every neighborhood in the country. On my uh, last trip to Yuma this past fall, I asked rank and file, uh, file border patrol officers what laws they needed us to write to do their jobs. To a person, every one of them said the same thing. We don't need new laws, we need to enforce our existing laws. <laughs> when President Trump faithfully executed those laws, our borders were secure. But there's still much that can be done legislatively to assure this never happens again. The law requires every asylum claimant to be detained until their case is adjudicated. We need a Title 42 type mechanism to assure that we have the capacity to enforce this law. Uh, credible fear standards need to be tightened to prevent the admission of anyone who has a criminal record or who has passed through a safe country. Unaccompanied minors need to be returned safely to their own homes immediately. E-Verify should be required to streamline compliance with the law that protects Americans' jobs. The current abuses of parole authority must be stopped. Well, the two parties are far, far apart on this issue, as evidenced by the lack of any interest by the Democrats on this committee today to even address the crisis or listen to the people who've been directly affected by it. And the trust gap is also immense. If this administration refuses to enforce existing laws, why would anyone trust it to enforce future laws? But this won't stop us from trying. That's, that's why we're here today. 
but I'm afraid that this is going to get worse until the American people demand that these policies be reversed. History is screaming this warning at us. Countries that cannot or will not enforce their borders simply aren't around very long. We can't and we won't let that become the epitaph of the American Republic. And I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Well said. With